Yo, what's up? This is Josh. And this is Diamond. We're from Tetrarch, and you're watching Heavy Consequence. Hey everyone, it's Spencer from Heavy Consequence. I'm here with Diamond and Josh from Tetrarch. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, Thank man. you so much. Yeah. And uh, you've been out supporting Seven Dust on their Animosity tour. And uh, while you guys are not a brand new band, you guys have been around uh, uh, quite a bit. What's it like touring with a veteran band like Seven Dust who's been around for like, you know, 25 plus years? Do you learn anything on the road watching them? They're just, they're just so professional. Everything they do, the way they run their ship when it comes to their crew, to their live show, um, they just, they're really good humans. Like they're so nice to everybody they come in contact with, whether it's bands on their tour, their own crew, fans. Um, it's just something that we can always look and be like, no matter how long you've been playing music, how long, how big you get, you can always be humble. And I can take that from them. That's what I would say. Just like, if anything, you know, we really learned, you know, how, like he said, no matter what your position is or whatever, you can treat the bands on your tour well. Um, you know, like we've been on tours where the bands didn't treat us as well, you know, uh, for no reason, just because it, they felt it was a rite of passage. And like Seven Dust isn't like that at all. They literally, I think we're kind of shy. We're kind of a shy group. We stay to ourselves. But like f after the first show, LJ came up to us and he was like, what's up? I've been trying to find you guys. Like and like introduced himself. And like from then on, like the whole band was just so accommodating to us and just they made us feel welcome every day so it was awesome very cool and uh last year you released your second album unstable but uh you guys have been around for a while 2007 as i understand you formed so and so you guys really grinded it out for a while and i think a lot of people think you're a new band but what's it like after like kind of pounding the pavement for all those years to start to get this kind of recognition uh, the last few years I think we wouldn't change any of it you know there's a lot it, it makes us appreciate every little step you know we, we started like you said our first show in a little venue in like 2007 something like that uh, we grinded got in a van toured around the country sleeping in Walmart parking lots in random people's houses playing to bartenders to one person um, and just seeing every step continue to grow and to grow it just pushes us to want to work harder and to continue because it's been so worth it i wouldn't change anything yeah no it's rewarding you know i always say that because we did every step then we had to like we literally did every step yeah. from like playing your school talent show to playing the local shows where every local band hated us to play touring around the country playing to the bartender making twenty dollars maybe and a slice of pizza maybe if we're lucky that's a good day um so it made it makes everything now just you can look back and say, oh, remember when we were in like middle school and we were like, God, if we could just play a show with Slipknot one day, like that would be amazing. And like, here we are, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's rewarding to look at each little thing and, and see what we've done and been through to get to this point. It's cool. And you guys are kind of considered part of this like new metal revival, if you will. Uh, I know it's not great to put labels on it, but it, it's kind of, it is a way to kind of you know, bring your music to bands. And, and do you think, you know, with bands like yourself, with bands like Code Orange, other bands, do you think, you know, new metal back in the day is now getting kind of a newfound respect that it may not have gotten uh, for a long time? I think people kind of turned their noses at it, but now bands like Korn and, 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 and Limp Bizkit and other bands, like, look back and it's like, wow, those bands were actually pretty killer. I think a lot of the, a lot of us that grew up on the on those type of bands like the Slipknots and Corns and Lincoln Parks, a lot of us are like, you know, we're peak, we're we're budding, we're adults now, mm -hmm. and so like a lot of us are in bands and 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 touring and, you know, that was our modern metal, you know, back then. That that was on the radio. That was like what got all, most of us made us fans. So I think now our group of people are now just like kind of talking about it again and being like. Nah, have you heard Lincoln Park before? <laughs> yeah. Lincoln Park's sick, you know? So I, I think that's cool. And I've never grown out of that, you know? Like, we were never like a scene band. Like, we didn't go through the scene phase or like the, you know, the Rise Records phase or whatever they want to call it. Like, we always were like pushing, like, we listened to corn, you know? Like, so I'm glad that now everyone else is uh, paying attention again. <laughs> that's huh. very cool. 
And uh, like I said, you released your latest album, Unstable. It's been a year and a half. And I know with COVID and pandemics, you know, a lot of bands are just kind of touring in support of their albums that may have even come out before then. But that said, being a year and a half, are the wheels already turning on the next one? Is there any writing going on? And any, uh, Yeah, like absolutely. In- we're, we're always working and we're always writing. And, uh, you know, we got maybe something else going on that we haven't announced yet in uh, the winter, maybe looking going overseas early next year. And then from then on, we're definitely looking at, you know, getting back in there and, and, and putting something else out for everybody. So.